Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everyone. I'm Rob Scribner. Welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is episode 94, and i uh, got some interesting things to talk about this week. want to thank you very much for listening and coming back if you're a regular listener, and if you're brand new, welcome to the show. So, let's get started. Well, the first thing I'd like to talk about today is something I came across uh, uh, watching, I believe, uh, Cheap RV Living, uh, a guy named Bob that runs his show there. And he was interviewing a couple that does homeschooling. And so uh, you guys kind of know because of old school, I kind of him and haw about whether that's a good idea or not. But uh, every time I listen to something like that, and uh, sometimes my opinions change, or I'm enlightened, or I've learned something new. And so, uh, interesting conversation he uh, did in this interview, uh, this couple, and uh, I can definitely relate to it. And for example, when my kids were little, we lived in Kent, Washington, and uh, my, as my kids got into Elementary school really wasn't too much of the issues, except there was always drama f- from the kids and stuff like that. And uh, sometimes I felt like some of the teachers, instead of trying to resolve issues, they just want to send kids off to a program or something to, uh, like if they're little and they're not talking as quickly as other kids when they're really young, They'll panic and start thinking they have to go to some kind of speech class or, or something like that. Um, I remember my daughter, was one ga- uh, teacher thought she stuttered a lot. <laughs> and I can guarantee you that she was just, uh, uh, her, her brain worked faster than her lips. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Anyway, she's just fine. She didn't stutter. But anyway, that's the kind of stuff we were putting up with schools all the time. Well, later on, as the kids got into um, closer to junior high, and that's we had junior high is not middle school uh, where we lived. And uh, my daughter would bring up the fact that they had some really uh, crazy things going on at school and gangs and girls fighting and stuff like that. And our solution to a problem, we kept moving out farther and farther from the big cities and uh, kind of chased the uh, uh, small time schools and tend to uh, keep that kind of stuff down. So that was our solution at the time. Well, obviously over time, and that's been, my kids are in their 30s now, so things have changed. Even the schools farther out and stuff are dealing with issues that are just, and especially new things like social networks and cell phones and and um, um, parents that uh, don't seem to be leading their kids or are, are, um, controlling their kids as much, and the kids are more controlling them. And so uh, that's where I started relating to the conversation. <laughs> I'm coming back, <laughs> relating to this conversation about homeschooling. So, one of the things that they uh, um, were talking about is the curriculum of school and how the fact that they have kind of a set learning um, abilities for, for uh, different grades. And they're pretty much set to that and required to teach whatever in that. If you're a second grader, these are certain things you're supposed to learn as a second grader. And one of the first things they brought up was uh, they noticed their kid would say, well, have you learned how to do this? Uh, In my case, it would be like, did you learn cursive yet? Which I guess they don't teach that anymore. Uh, Or talk about different kinds of math or things like that. And the kids would say oh no that's that's third and fourth le- grade level we won't learn that yet and it's like first thing that comes to mind is why not <laughs> if you're able to comprehend it at second grade at a fourth or fifth grade level then learn it 
Well, that's how schools work. It's more done like cattle. And so that was a good point that, you know, if you have a, a kids that want to strive to learn a little higher level than um, to, to keep away from boredom and things like that, then there's a good point right there. So the next thing they were talking about was uh, kids' interests. And so it's amazing if you take an interest, you can apply several subjects to it whether it's measuring, which is math, or if it comes into science or biology, um, the history, um, one builds on the other. And so they mentioned that as since they were a traveling couple with children, uh, the kids would ask questions about certain things that they see. And so the parents were uh, uh, pursue that in an educational mode and apply it to their homeschooling. And, and, and so their, uh, their uh, standing on that is the fact that the kids were having fun learning because they could take everything that they see and turn it into an educational moment. And, and by the way, uh, one, I think both of the parents were ex-teachers. So they had a good foundation. But she actually mentioned she was a, uh, she was a ten year teach, uh, 10 years of teaching she felt like sometimes she was actually hampering her kids because she was kind of drilled of this is how you know step by step of how you teach in a public school uh, scenario and uh anyway so sometimes she felt like she was actually hampering the kids learning so uh i think one of the things they didn't talk about too much in the interview was the people or the parents that are doing this homeschooling have to be regimented they have to uh, uh and plus uh, i believe that homeschooling requires a registration with like a a network of people that do homeschooling to meet a certain level of curriculum of, of what kids require through the years and so uh, and then there's networking they talked about the and i have cousins that have uh, their kids homeschooled and they did great, and they're older kids, obviously, because of my age. Um, and their kids, a lot of them went to college, a very successful, uh, um, very successful um, kids. So, anyways, you know, uh, but during the learning years of grade school, uh, there's definitely a good debate of, of saying that's a good way to go. But if you, I can tell you right away that it's not going to be successful if the parents aren't driven too. now Bob during this interview was did bring one good question out of like what about the social uh, aspect of kids growing up with that and they, they um, felt that because of the places they go there was a lot of places that uh, had kids with them and they were being homeschooled so they they did get a chance to interact with other kids children um, and also learn the fundamentals of dealing with different types of adults and how to get along with them and so uh, they didn't feel that concerned about the social aspect of growing up with other kids so and, it, and of course it's always on the parents shoulders of how kids interpret things around them or whether they f feel like uh, the world is not a perfect place. And and so uh, it's definitely always important that the kids understand that they o won't always get their way or some things come out to be sad or, or history um, isn't exa exactly pleasant all the time. And we it's important for us to teach that and how to deal with the feelings and the thoughts about that and understand that a lot of it's a learning experience of you may not like what you see right now but our goal as you know uh, people is to do better and, and of course you heard me on other shows where I'm talking about history and things like that or getting ready statues and stuff I've always been a believer that uh, even if history has negativity to it it's important to remember those things just like 9-11 Never forget 9-11 because it reminds us, especially 16 years later, of why things are the way they are right now. And so uh, to try to erase that kind of stuff is uh, 
uh, not good. And that's why uh, they're even talking in, in like Texas, I believe, that in some of the history books to eliminate uh, George Washington and Ben Franklin and some other people who created our foundation, even though they may have done some things that are not socially acceptable now, to dismiss them. And it's like, no, I mean, everybody's got, everybody's been a sinner in some way or another. And how's it cast the first stone for anybody who's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, we all have something that we may not be proud of in the past or, or doing or, or whatever. And we all strive to do better and better every day. And so um, to dismiss uh, somebody because at the time, um, 200 years ago, things were acceptable now, but aren't acceptable you know, in this time, uh, day and age, does not mean we shouldn't have them in our history books. We just need to understand the times, you know, what things were back then. So anyway, so getting back to the homeschooling, um, um, is I think if you had a parents that were very supportive and understand the fundamentals of learning of winning and losing and understanding negative and positive and understanding how to build from those to make uh, yourself a, a better individual, uh, understanding uh, um, controversy, understanding debate, understanding people's opinions, um, you could really do well with teaching our kids uh, through homeschooling. And of course, having a foundation of following the laws of what education is supposed to be defined in the United States. Uh, there's uh, programs for that and and curriculum for that. And so uh, as long as those things are followed and the parents have good principles, I don't see where that could be an issue. I do concern myself about kids not being able to deal with some social issues, but there's other social issues that are totally ridiculous because parents nowadays, um, you know, like bullies and things like that, sometimes the bullies are bullies because their parents are bullies or parents are, are not supporting that child. So um, that would be my only, you know, uh, the pros and cons of this homeschooling thing is whether the parents have the, uh, uh, the drive to, be good teachers and follow the foundations of, of education and the fact that the kids may not get the social ex, um, exposure to other kids. But this day and age, I'm not sure the social part of things are all that cool. We were a lot different 20 years, 30 years, 40 years ago in school. <laughs> I guess this has <laughs> been 40 years. Anyway, yeah, the schools were, uh, the kids, I don't when I see what I do get to see of what happens in some of these schools, there's some insane kids, and I don't know how the parent, uh, the teachers, uh, can handle that every day. But um, I know, I mean, it's not like that all the time. But I'm just saying, it's um, things are different in the school districts and the uh, public schools than what we were dealing with when we were kids, and. Uh, uh, we, of course, we still had our bullies and we still had, but we also had the office with the paddle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> discipline was, was there. So anyway, um, and so thumbs up on those folks that do homeschooling, thumbs up on those who do it well, and especially those ones that are driven to make sure that their kids get a good education. And if you're able to take your travel experience or traveling um uh, locations and then turn them into a teaching experience, uh, reminding them that you know you cover all the basic fundamentals of reading and, and English and uh, uh, mathematics and science and all the other things. Uh, uh, that's a good thing. And, um, and of course, one of the things I did bring up is we're not experts in everything, as the parents said, uh, like art or something like that. So the way they do that is they... F uh, find organizations in the area that are doing different kinds of art things or go to art, or go see art um, or and learn how to create art, which is important too. Um, that's Art's really good for creating vision and solitude. 
and and uh, anyway, so uh, that's how they handled you know areas that they may be weak in, and so yeah, it was really good. So uh, kudos to those guys. So let's move on to our next subject. So a quick note, you know, I like people say if you got a videos or something you don't like to watch, Rob, you shouldn't watch them. Well, like I said, we watch some of these shows because we're talk radio. And so, uh, boy, it seems like the uh, nomads are just uh, losing it, I guess. Um, I uh, always got a kick out of watching uh, uh, videos from Lane Screw 1. And he just did a video just saying, it seems like the more crazier or, or controversial our videos are, the more views we get. And... He's right. Uh, it's terrible. Um, if you, and he also his point was, uh, if you're uh, putting out really good content and really good uh, um, uh, DIY kind of videos and stuff like that, those videos don't do as well. But they're very uh, informative, and and that's true too. And we're kind of talking about. The, he was talking as far as how people's videos do and. Uh, uh, in the YouTube world. So um, now if you're watching or listening to this show on the video, um, we get just a, a fraction of the traffic on the video version as when we uh, what we track is what our subscriptions are on our podcasts, which are just fantastic thanks to you guys. And uh, uh, so we never know unless we put a uh, have something very controversial on our radio show, then our YouTube show goes crazy too. But normally uh, our YouTube podcast uh, gets a very small fraction of traffic as opposed to the podcast traffic. So uh, very interesting. But, you know, it's like um, we'll have a video like uh, uh, like our Lake Powell video where we use the word disaster in it. And the thing goes nuts. And it's like... <laughs> Anyway, it's amazing sometimes, but um, some people, I mean, some channels, you know, they're definitely drive, you know, going for that channel growth, and then others just do it because they enjoy it. We kind of do it because we just enjoy it. We try to keep a foundation of uh, uh, not being too crazy, and uh, um, we just kind of leave it at that. But anyway, some of these other ones is like. Uh, you can see uh, in their titles, you can see uh, what they talk about. And if you really monitor some of these and look at their uh, traffic and look at their subject matter, it's a complete um, truth that uh, the line screw gentleman was talking about. He's up in Canada. Um, and he's kind of like your half and half nomad crazy man as a nomad retired common sense with a career and actually makes money. Um and so he's kind of like both worlds sometimes. And so I get a kick out of him because uh, he'll poke at all sides of the spectrum. Anyway, so I get a kick out of him. So I, I hope uh, uh, I like to meet him someday. I'd get a kick out of meeting him. I'm, um, I think he's just a few years younger than I am. Uh, if he's retired, I just retired. So, uh, uh, yeah, I think we get along. Um, I think he... Uh, um, probably is a little more rambunctious than I am, but I'd still get a kick out of meeting him. So someday, line screw, I'd love to meet you. Anyway, so just thought I'd talk about that real quick. Um, I do want to uh, also t tell you a little bit about our um, nightmare of our boat and a little story to go along with that. And it definitely applies to the RV world too. So let's move on to my next subject. So for those of you who have been following our boat and boating and cruising uh, story uh, at Lake Powell this year, and the last video we even put out was what a disaster. And I had I stopped recording on what was going on there because it's been a total nightmare. <laughs> total nightmare. So from the time that we made that video, it's been about five weeks now. So that whole time, 
we've just been trying to get the boat operational. It never left the docks other than going to the boat launch. And here's my story a little bit, and I'm sticking to it. And this stuff will apply to RVs because I know everybody, when something breaks, you know, you, and you want a repair person, you get a little bit desperate. And when you own a boat, they're far and few between. But my, I, I, this is partially my fault, but at the same time, uh, the, the services that we were asking for should have followed up on some definitely uh, regular uh, ethical kind of things. So anyway, so what happened is you guys heard that our batteries are bad and there happened to be a guy there named Marvin Gill, I guess, and he uh, owns this boat repair storage place, which is actually on the Utah side of, uh, of Lake Powell. And, and I think it's called uh, um, Lake Powell um, Boat Center and Storage. Anyway, so I'm kind of saying this out loud because this is something people, if you are in the boating and you're up at Lake Powell, you need to avoid because this was very stressful. It was costly and disappointing. And it just ruined our whole boating season because our boating season, we only do two months at Lake Powell and it was totally a waste of money. So just to give you an idea, just to get a slip, it's over $300 a, a month. And so you have to pay for two months in advance. And so there's $700 we put down right away. So as soon as we get there, we got battery problems. So the guy was nice enough to, uh, at the boat launch, he says, I'll just spend the night your boat launch here. And he had some other people he was helping out on the same dock. So it's like, all right, we'll spend the night there. He came in and, and we and we're not really sure if we really needed to change our batteries, but since the boat is kind of still new to us, it was still a good idea to go ahead and change those so I know what the status is of the batteries that are in there. Because we were trying to start the engines and couldn't get it turned around, and our, the, the engine that fires up the easiest wouldn't fire up. And so then we grinded on it so hard that we actually not only needed new batteries, we ended up burning out the starter. I did. So he knew that. So we knew we needed a new starter. So I got the new batteries. We got one engine started, which is my uh, engine with an attitude, I call it, um, and kind of cripply took our boat over to the boat line, uh, to the marina and parked in the slip that we rented for $700, right, for two months. So there, from that point on, the nightmare just never stopped. So... It didn't make sense to go back up to Lake Powell until this guy got the starter changed, which he's like, oh, yeah, no problem. I'll get a starter and stuff. So we left the keys at the boat. And uh, so he uh, um, and that's where it just went bad. This guy would never uh, we, I, we we got his phone numbers. We got uh, his aiming and we found that he wouldn't answer his phone if we called him. But he would occasionally answer an I'm or a message on his phone. So that's where it started. It's like, all right, where are we at? And he's like, oh, I'll get around to it. And then, like, and then never call, never reply back for a day or two. Nothing happens. And then finally he says he's changed the starter, but the engine still won't run. And, uh, uh, and then like a week and a half later into this thing, he's like, I'll check. I think it could be a fuel pump or something like that. And uh, at the same time, he goes, by the way, your boat's sinking. <laughs> it's like, what? And it turned, you know, I have, the the boat does bring on water. Um, most boats do. And so you have a an auto um, belge in there. And so it turns, he goes, well, I go, what's going on? do you want me to fix the belge? It's like, well, it wasn't broken in the first place, but yeah. So anyway, so then he late, it wasn't like a week later. And it's like, I think he was manually going out and pumping our boat out. Um, but cause it was, it gets about five inches of water, a, um, a day, according to him, which, um, I don't think that was completely true. He's just away from the boat a long time for days. And, uh, Turns out he turned off the batteries while he was working on it and never turned the power back on. So the belge wasn't on anymore. And so 
but I'm not sure that's true too later because like a week later he says he goes to get ready to fix the belge and he gets down there and he sends me a note says good news you're back oh, there's nothing wrong with the belge it had a little piece of a uh had like a washer blocking the float and so it's working fine and it's like was it just that or was it the battery or just lying to us because we didn't mess up the, the belge he did Anyway, so this goes on for another week. And then the third week, we're getting like, that's it. We're going to come up. He goes, oh, I think I should have the boat running and all that stuff. And so uh, uh, he later finds out there's nothing wrong with a fuel pump. And it's every boat has what they call uh, uh, emergency switches, which you c connect to your belt or something. So if you fell off board, this little thing would pull out and the engines would quit. Turns out one of those were bad, which was the engine that wouldn't start. So all you had to do is like put a penny in it, and it would, and the engine fired right up. <laughs> so there was nothing wrong with the engine at all. It was this little switch. So anyway, he said, "Oh yeah, the boat will be running. You'll be able to get up." So we finally, the third week, we drive up and we get halfway there, and he calls and says, "There's been a major storm up there, which there was, and the marina got demolished." And so they were not even letting people in the marine. So we got as far as Flagstaff and ended up turning around and going home the third weekend. So we've been away from our boat for over three weeks now, right? So uh, and, and the bad part, and that is sure he took a day off so we could do this. It was on a Thursday night. So anyway, so the following weekend, it was like, we're coming up. Is it going to be running? He goes, oh, yeah, you'll be able to go out for the weekend. And I also told him, we're going to pull the boat and we're going to let, you know, uh, thinking that um, we're kind of questionable with that. Well, we'll take the boat over to his place and let him do some work on pulling the out drives off and replacing the boots back there to see if we can get rid of that leak So, um, and just get it done. But uh, anyway, so we get up there and the boat's uh, a mess. He's left tools on it and left like this blanket thing that he must use when he's working on the engine. And... Um, the engines, both of them, are not running with a hoot. Um, and he never fixed the little emergency switch. He said he was going to have fixed, so I had to put a penny in it, and it worked. And then the engine fired right up. But then the engine made this rattling sound that's never made before that are around the pulley systems, like he unloosened something, and I haven't had a chance to figure out what's wrong with it. And the engine that did run won't go down to an idle anymore. I have no clue what he did to those two engines, but it was uh, like, I got like, what the heck? And uh, then uh, uh, I was getting ready to, because, uh, you know, we we're going to load, we did bring the trailer up with us, so we we're going to load the boat on there. So I was kind of playing with the out drives to see, you know, up and down to make sure that, that they were working and I noticed my gauges were showing that they nothing was going on so I tried to move the out drives up or down and they don't work <laughs> I mean that's that's a big deal because you got to pull your out drives up to put on a trailer or you're going to be dragging engines all the way home so it's like dear lord so I spent like an hour in the engine compartment and I, not only that I was kind of like trying to figure out if I could figure out what a water leak is and stuff and it's so slow and so little it's a, I couldn't determine that um, but it's like trying to figure out what's wrong with my hydraulics for my out drives and I'm digging and looking and looking all the fuses and all the stuff and turns out he never hooked it back up when he changed the battery it was like this loose cable behind the battery that I reach back there and I feel this loose cable and I pull up and there's the terminal like so I touch the terminal to the battery and I say sure push the button and it works it's like are you kidding me and it's like what a, a nightmare well it didn't stop there <laughs> so we had a nice weekend and we uh, I didn't film it it just was one of those weekends it's like you know uh, it's really not a good story here and I definitely don't have much nice to say about what's happening to us so better not to say anything at all but in this show um, I, I got to mention it a little bit that if anybody's going up to Lake Powell, do not use this Marvin Gill dude 
out of uh, Utah at Lake Powell uh, Marine Center in storage. Oh, Lord, it was terrible. And so what made it even worse is so I'm just telling them. Oh, so on Saturday, <laughs> sorry, I get the story. Keep the story going here. So that weekend, that Saturday, we, uh, uh, you know, since he left tools and a blanket, I'm sure and I are going, you know, this has been a nightmare. This has been, and I don't want to take the boat to this guy. And because uh, it seems like everything just gets worse and uh, he won't call back. And, he, you know, I, and so as we're talking, you know, uh, we had a general idea and we talked to him. He says, oh, yeah, yeah, we're up to about eight hundred dollars. And it's like, OK, cool. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to stop at this eight hundred dollars with this guy because I'm not happy. And so we went to his shop and it was like, really, I can't even hardly. It was like not that great a place. <laughs> the, Anyway, and then I go into the store, and he's not there. And his partner, his girlfriend, had no clue who we were. We, I said, we were there to settle up with him and stuff. And so no bill, no invoices, no nothing. It's just like, you can leave a credit card number, and I'll write it down. It's like, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. I want a regular invoice, all that stuff. So anyway, so and I said, we're going to take the boat. If we don't hear from you guys today, um... Because we have concerns all that. And by the way, here's his tool. And here's, you know, we brought the tools and stuff to him. Uh, we're just going to take the boat home. And so all day long on that Saturday, no call, no no concerns at all. So we just took the boat home. So, um, which is actually just, if, you know, I feel like we're getting control again. Because we just totally lost control of the situation. And I'm not saying I'm not at fault at, at this too. I, I could have done this a little bit different it was more of a good old boy redneck kind of thing going on and i should have known better so <laughs> to take this even farther so he finally uh, i left a card for rv talk radio which has my email on that so i don't see watch that every day but so on monday which is uh during the week that i'm doing this show i get an invoice for eighteen hundred dollars a thousand more than he said it was going to be. And it's like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. I am, you know, I'm getting to that age now. If, if something's not right or something is not ethical, it's time to battle. It's, it's, and it's time to, you know, I, a lot of times, sometimes you just got to eat it. But this guy, this was terrible. This was the most awful experience in my entire life of getting service on anything um, and I was held at bay it ruined our whole season we spent what now it's whatever this bill will be uh, I wrote back to him like no 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 you said this and whatever and so I think we've negotiated that he's just gonna charge us for the parts which is fair you gotta pay for those and and, uh, and let's just go separate ways because I'm gonna go to war here if you don't uh, fair up on this thing because uh, uh, I mean I've uh, well it's just the, you know wages lost and there's the fact that my boat's even worse shape than it is and it's going to cost me money uh, down here to take it to a new shop uh, there's a lot of things um, Sherry's you know loss of uh, vacation because of all this it was just terrible it, it was a bad experience and uh, so I think we got them to agree to that according to the last email i wrote back saying this is not right and uh i you know i i even suggested that i'll take this to a higher level because this is just so ethically wrong so anyway we'll get it it looks like resolved here um okay on that part of it but what a terrible terrible experience and it, and it's partially my fault partially really bad communication and service up there and so uh live and learn i guess but yeah we make our mistakes <laughs> anyway so boating this year has been a disaster and so we've decided we're pulling the boat uh after we get back from and that's the next thing i'm going to talk about in the next module is we're going up to the rv up in central oregon and uh checking on it uh, before the winter comes uh, which is uh, we're really excited to do that 
and our daughter would be with us. So that'd be kind of cool. Anyway, so uh, um, after we get back with that, of course, we're in Arizona. Remember, our summer is kind of starting now. I'm going to make an appointment where I place the work on my boat to get the engines running good. Also check um, those uh, have the out drives serviced anyway. And um, I'm going to drop some money on that on purpose and put new canvases on it because uh, also that windstorm up there did a, a little bit of damage to our older canvases on there anyway. So uh, it's, it, we just want to pretty the boat up. And then once we get it, we're gonna, just going to put it in Lake Sororo for a month to test it, make sure it's running good, probably store it again for a couple of months and maybe try to Lake Powell again earlier next year. And hopefully we can actually go out in Lake Powell. That would be kind of nice. So anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And a little bit of ranting, I apologize, but uh, interesting story. If there's something to learn from it on my part, your part, anybody else's part, or if somebody has a boat up there, uh, then it's been a good thing to talk about. Anyway, let's move on to a new Hello, subject. And welcome to Arizona Talk Radio, hosted by me, Rob Scribner. So before I go uh, any farther, I wanted to take the time politics, to say thank you uh, and welcome to some of our new track. listeners and some of the comments we got. So I got some comments on our trucking uh, episode. Didn't really get much on the minimalist one we did last week. And... Uh, um, I see. Uh, most of them were uh, great. Uh, you got to remember. Sometimes it sounds like you know we rant, but uh, we also bring up subjects we like to talk about because we're talk radio. And you'll notice, like maybe five episodes ago, you may hear me kind of push buttons a little bit about homeschooling, and then and you'll find out like the sh three sh or four shows later, we'll talk about all the good things about it, and so. It's because it's a talk show, and it, and we do that on purpose to get a discussion going. And some shows we get we get some great uh, discussions. The trucker one was great, and uh, so uh, uh, first of all, welcome all new listeners. We appreciate you very much. Uh, remember, our show kind of focuses on lifestyle, so we're not talking about. Uh, repairs and, and the same old thing of uh, you know, how to clean your septic tank 20, 20 different ways. Uh, we tend to just uh, talk about the different lifestyles we observe or talk to people about, uh, whether it's nomadic, whether it's uh, retired, or whether it's somebody uh, doing this for a career. Uh, we just kind of touch bases on it, and sometimes we just kind of you know tweak it a little bit, and they get a discussion going. So it can change. Every show could actually have a different angle. And so we kind of do that on purpose because uh, it's a talk show. <laughs> but anyway, welcome aboard. I had somebody uh, go after me because uh, I was a couple episodes ago uh, talking about the nomadics a little bit. And he says, obviously, you have a different social uh, standing than other people. And I was quite privileged and stuff. And it's like, well, actually, we don't. We're not that well to do. We're pretty average Joe, but I'm fortunate because I retired from a company and had a pension, and my wife is still working. But you know, when she gets 65 and she retires, um, you know, we our money will be even tighter. So it's critical we do things right between now and 65. Uh, so anyway, that's why we have an RV now that we anticipate. We bought a new one. Uh, to have it paid off before we turn uh, to Sherry's retirement time. In the meantime, we just in, you know we've gone full timing in our RV, and then we've also used it for snowbirding, and now we're using kind of for snowbirding and kind of helping Sherry's folks out because of uh, health issues and things like that up in Central Oregon. And that's the next thing I'll talk about uh, in the next module. But anyway. Um, uh, so I appreciate it. Once again, uh, I love the feedback, negative or positive, but all I ask is people to keep it professional. Um, I think the comment that the guy did was a little bit on the uh, rough side, but it was still uh, respectable and professional. And so uh, I do appreciate someone pointing out that I have a different, may have a different social standing I don't know if it's social, financial standing than, say, folks that may have been um, forced to be at the nomadic level of things um, or um, van, uh, caravan kind of, uh, not caravan, but van living kind of dwelling. Sorry, <laughs> can't get the right words right. Anyway, and that's understandable. And I do talk about that in other shows. 
where I appreciate people that do that, that are living within their means. Whether you make 100000 a year or whether you make uh, 10000 a year based on maybe uh, disability payments or Social Security, uh, loss of uh, your husband or something like that. So we talk about all that stuff. And so, yeah, uh, keep the comments coming. I appreciate it. Not angry at all. Um, if I get one that's trying to push my buttons, typically I'll just say back, <laughs> right back, thank you for your feedback, and that's about it, and don't add to it. Um, I, I'm not into trying to create some kind of a, um, controversy or something. And I also mentioned that I was talking about statues and people wanting to knock them down. I even talked about it a little bit in this show. Um, I just think our history is important to uh, to keep around good, bad, or indifferent um, so we don't forget. Just like uh, the Holocaust things, we never want to forget that. And we don't want to forget about 9-11. And we don't want to forget about our founders. Uh, and so in the Civil War, there was a uh, big controversy, but a lot of people doesn't matter what race they were, lost their lives over that, the fight for freedom for everyone. And so that's something to remember. Anyway, and, and you know, you think about it, people on the other side, they made sacrifices to believing what they believed at the time. And so there were some statues made for them. And so uh, to those people, um, those were brave people that stood up for a cause, but it wasn't a good cause. But, um, but yeah, every, um, it's all different. It's history. Uh, yeah, should I talk about the NFL? <laughs> and yes, I stand for the flag always. And um, I, you know, I do believe in protests. I, I do believe that's what we're America is all about. I just don't think you should use the flag and the Star Spangled Banner uh, to, to do your protesting. However, I do understand the subjects if. if this has gotten so out of hand that nobody even hardly remembers what the reason that they were doing the kneeling in the first place. So I saw a great video on Facebook the other day about um, is, you know, when you're a cook, you cook. And when you're a, a lawyer, you, you're paid to be a lawyer. You're paid to be a cook. You're paid to be a janitor. You're uh, paid to be a, a receptionist or uh, on and on. And those football players are paid to be football players. And so if in normal industries and jobs, whatever our personal feelings are about whether we uh, want to protest about something or we have uh, sexual preferences and things like that, those are things you keep to yourselves and do your job that you're paid for. And in a lot of cases, if you brought up all those kind of uh, things at work, you could actually lose your job. And so their point is, is football players, they make great money. Um, your job is to be football players. And if you're a celebrity, your job is your product. Deliver your entertainment um, capacity to us. Um, if you're a singer, we, we like you because of your music. Um, and why you're doing your performances and stuff, please stick to the what we paid for. And if you have, you know... Um, uh, comments or uh, stands on certain things do that on a different platform um, that's all we ask and so I thought that was a good way to look at it and so and I agree with that completely so anyway yeah I had to bring that up so anyway let me uh, move on to another subject well we're getting back to RV subjects <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> you know, I just kind of, uh, by the way, on our show, I, I know that some people have this script and stuff like that. And sometimes I come in with general ideas, what we want to talk about. And they actually kind of monitor the different channels and stuff like that. And I go, gosh, I'd love to comment on something like that. And I'll actually change my program right in the middle of the show. <laughs> and anyway, hopefully that's what makes us different. Um, so yeah, no scripts. Uh, so maybe I should, but um, then it wouldn't be original, would it? Um, the other thing you'll find is we're not usually trying to sell you something. <laughs> we always appreciate the support and uh, any donations and things like that. That's always cool, but 
yeah, I'm not trying to sell you nothing and there's no uh, Amazon links on here, so sorry. But anyway, what I want to talk about was uh, we are finally going to get reunited with our RV and I'm looking forward to that. And it's kind of cool. I got I kind of mentioned this in a few episodes ago that now that we're not living in our RV full time and went back to a house and then we put our RV we did have it in Washington for a while, but then it made more sense to put it over at Sherry's folks because one is they're getting there up in age and um, we may have to be there to kind of help support things. And we are kind of going up there for some issues. Um, the RV is there and plus the rent's free. <laughs> they have five acres in a great place. So it saves us money. So uh, long story short on that. So in two weeks, well, and actually in a week, I'm actually driving up to Central Oregon. It takes two days to get up there. Uh, and Sherry and my daughter are flying up three days later. Um, I'll be there for a day to kind of get the RV uh, opened up again, and I, I taped up uh, all events and stuff like that and winterized it. Uh, and plus I'll pick up some groceries and stuff like that and have it all ready for the girls uh, when they get there. And so we're kind of looking forward to that. I may actually spend, they're only coming up for four days or flying up and I'm flying back. I'm picking them up and taking them back to the airport when they leave. And uh, I might stick around up there a little bit just to make sure everything's okay and kind of um, check with Sherry's folks and make sure they're, because, uh, you know, when you have sometimes when you have company, you tend to kind of hide things a little bit. And so uh, after the girls leave and stuff like that, and when I kind of let them get back to normal a little bit, I can kind of observe if everything's okay. And uh, I know it sounds kind of silly, but uh, we care a lot about them. So anyway, uh, what the, the point I want to make is when you aren't in your RV full time, to us, the RV feels very special again. Um, we just love it when we get back up to the RV and, you know, we lived in it for so long. It's just got these certain things about it that you just kind of go, ah, oh, we're back in our RV. It's so comfortable. And, you know, for those of you who are new to the channel, we have a 3625 RE Montana, uh, a 2013 model. Very comfortable. Um, and, uh, anyway, so, uh, I don't know what it is, but I'm actually very excited to get back up to the RV and check on it, see if I've stored it away well, make sure no critters got into the refrigerator vents or anything like that, and uh, no mouse, you know, the mouse or something didn't get in it. And so that'll kind of tell me how well I packed it up for the month and a half I've been gone from it. And, uh, and then, of course, before I leave again, I got to do it again. But if there's anything I could have done better, I'll do better. Uh, <laughs> live and learn right so anyway we're, uh in two weeks we'll uh and you'll see us doing some videos about being back up in the uh up at the rv and if i discover anything that i might have done wrong or would have want to do different i'll pass that along in our videos and uh i apologize for not doing any videos about the boat thing it was kind of frustrating and uh uh I don't know, it just seemed like doing a video about a boat that goes nowhere just didn't cut it. But we did have a very fun weekend. And uh, Lake Powell is a beautiful place. If you ever get a chance to go there, um, it's a great place. But Central Oregon is one of our favorite places. And we are looking forward to seeing some of the fall colors. Uh, I'm assuming I'm going to see a little bit. Um, here in Arizona, uh, we could go up to the Flagstaff area, and I think that the fall colors are a little bit later than the ones up in the northwest but uh, we do get the fall colors but not down here in arizona uh, we just get uh, great weather <laughs> for the next eight months great great summer weather and really looking forward to that so anyway so that's the plan to see in, um, the next show um, i may be talking about being up there but uh, sometimes we pre-record some of our shows um, when we know that we're not going to be here uh, one or two days before a show comes out, which is on Mondays, by the way. And so, yeah, looking forward to that. So I guess my big point is that sometimes when you're RV full-time, sometimes you kind of the, the, the magic kind of floats away. You get kind of tired of it or complacent. And uh, now that we are not in our RV all the time, 
we so much enjoy going to the RV and, and staying at something very, uh, very comfy and cozy about our RV. And we really do appreciate that. So, yeah, that's um, uh, that's coming up and we'll definitely be telling you more about it. Now, the one thing I haven't really talked about is the fact that, you know, you, I've driven up to Washington twice this year in the summer. And now I'm going to Oregon, Central Oregon, and so I've been driving the truck a lot. So what I haven't been telling you is, oh my gosh, I've been spending money on tires. Whew. So our Mazda, we have a little Mazda 3, that's Sherry's car, and it's uh, uh, maybe five years old. It's a little Mazda 3. And um, we've actually had the original tires on it since then. So anyway, we ended up buying tires for her car this year. And if you haven't learned by now that if you're down in the hot weather areas, they're really hard on two things, tires and batteries. Uh, hot weather is tough. Well, the the um, the dually, my Ford, um, finally the back duallys were kind of looking a little bit thin. And so I finally, before I did the Washington trip, I replaced the two duallys in the back. Um, because on a diesel like mine, I put really expensive tires in the front because if I don't, they only last like a year because the weight of the diesel is so hard on the front tires that I actually start wearing on the sides if I didn't buy quality tires. Well, finally, uh, it's been about two, two and a half years since I bought those really good quality tires and they're actually starting to show wear on the sides. And so I had replaced those. So I probably dropped a good $1,800 in tires this year. And so that's kind of been painful. But the point is, um, it's just not worth uh, what could happen if you have a blowout. And of course, uh, you know, we've had a blowout before on the RV, but never on the cars. And so I just, I've just always made it a point uh, to keep good quality tires on your rig. And I highly recommend, and I like to pass that along, that in the RV world, um, a lot of the new RVs, they don't put a very good quality tire in your RV. So you keep that in mind. If you're going to do some long hauls, either maybe switch your tires out to a higher quality tire or because uh, trailer tires are... Um, that's what's all I know is and, and I don't know how many times I hear about blowouts every summer. And of course, we're going to start hearing about them in the winter for people coming down here in Arizona. Anyway, tires are important, especially if you're coming down to this warm weather area. Hard on tires. And if you got weak batteries or kind of just barely cranking and you come down here in Arizona, your batteries will just die and you're going to be buying batteries anyway. So, if you can get good deals on tires or batteries before you do any more long trips, you better go for it because it's nothing worse than having to buy a tire out of necessity and you get burned. You know how that goes. So anyway, just pass that along. So anyway, I need to wrap this up. So it's getting kind of a long show here. So I want to thank all the new viewers for coming on board. I love your feedback and comments, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. We we'll always ask you to be professional, and we uh, and we'll always be professional back. And uh, anyway, so uh, next week we're going to kind of get into the RV mode. I have to drive up to Central Oregon, which takes about two days, and then when I get there. I may do a show up there, or I'll do a pre-recorded show. But yeah, I'll probably end up doing a show up there. I'm going to have to, I think. So uh, uh, unfortunately, I got to use a different microphone, which isn't as good a quality as this one at, at the podcast stuff here. But I have to do my show from a laptop. But anyway, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for the comments. Uh, thank you for all the new listeners. And uh, we look forward to talking to you on our next show. If you have some subjects or things you want to rattle us on to talk about our next show, we, we love it. And uh, anyway, we ask everybody to be safe. And if you get a chance to buy an RV or get an RV, I highly recommend it. And for those of you that have an RV, just be safe and happy trails to everyone. So we'll talk to you later. See you next week. Bye now. Thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. Don't forget to subscribe, like our videos, and share us with the world. We appreciate it. Have a great day and be safe out there, guys. Bye.